now that we have got some fundamental knowledge about a network and IP addressing in the form of IPv4, we need to realize when a network is created, how are IP addresses allocated to the computers that join? For a simple case, if you are in any network that you are currently connected, it could be at your office or it could be at your home. Did you ever know what is the IP address assigned to your computer? You can well identify if you are in a Windows host to go and type IP config. That will give you the list of devices in the form of network interface cards on your computer and what is the IP address that has been associated to your computer. In this case, my laptop is assigned this IPv4 address. There is a gateway and there is a DNS suffix which is given and we will understand about all these as we go by. Further, my laptop also has a wireless adapter. This is a case of the Ethernet physical NIC to which I connect my computer on a LAN cable. Whereas if I scroll down, it also tells me what is the IP address it has been allocated on the Wi-Fi adapter. Nowadays, computers have both a LAN cable and a Wi-Fi means of connecting to the network. So that's what has happened here. So why did it associate this specific address to my computer? It goes back to number one, the idea of computers getting IP addresses associated. We will look at how did my computer here get or how did your computer get an IP address automatically when we look at DHCP options. But right now, the idea is to understand how did this range of IP addresses come in. To understand this, when you create a network, if I were to represent this as a network, one of the fundamental questions you need to ask when you are setting it up is to identify its CIDR. Otherwise, the expansion for CIDR happens to be having a history, but we will understand this only from the perspective of what we need to understand in this course, which is it is based on the philosophy of classless inter domain routing. So IP addresses are now assigned to networks based on a CIDR. We will understand what is this routing and why did it come into place later on. So when you define a network, you choose a CIDR. The CIDR specifies the range of IP addresses for the network. A CIDR thereby is a compact representation of the entire network range that you are going to get for this network from an IP addressing perspective. For example, I can take a simple case of a CIDR which looks like this 10.0.0.0 slash 16. Typically, such a network is given in office premises. It could also be a slash 8 or any other number. We will explore this. Or if you are in a home network, you will typically have a 198.168.0.0 slash 16. What is the meaning of this representation. When you look at IP addressing, we are right now looking at IPv4. And in IPv4, we said there is a 32-bit addressing scheme. Now, if you look at this representation that has been given, there is a 10.0.0.0 slash 16. So let's take that I'm going to assign this as the CIDR for my network that I want to set up. Then what is the meaning of this? It's pretty simple. 10.0.0.0 looks like an IP address, but the slash 16 means the first 16 bits, which I can represent as slash 16 is fixed, which simply means my network that I'm giving will have an IP address range of 10.0.0.0 all the way to 10.0.255.255. How did I land up with this? Because I said 10.0.0.0 slash 16, it means the first 16 bits in my network are fixed for this network, which means this IP address range for my network is going to be all the way of 
10.0 entirely. On the other hand, I could have also assigned a CIDR for my network as 192.168.1.0 slash 24. What is the meaning of this? That's pretty simple. I am reserving the first 24 bits for this network, which results in the fact the entire network will have an IP address range of 192.168.1.0 all the way to 192.168.1.255. So I get 255 IP addresses for my network. The slash value that I give need not be a multiple of 24. Please remember that. It could be any range within the IPv4 addressing scheme if you are setting up an IPv4 network. All that we are saying is what is the network prefix? So the first list of that IP address can be identified as a network prefix and then we have host identifiers which are the IP addresses assigned to host. So if I take this second case that I took up which is 192.168.1.0 slash 24 then for this network, the network prefix happens to be 192.168.1. Whereas host identifiers for the computers in this network can be in the range of 0 to 255 in the last octet. When you define networks, you specify what is its CIDR by means of which you identify the entire IP addressing scheme for this network and you get to know what is the total range of IP addresses for this network? It is very important you plan this upfront to help you identify, depending on the CIDR, what is the value of number of IP addresses you would get. I'm going to take you to a simple page which will help you to understand this whole idea. And for doing that, I'm going to go to a website which helps you to decipher what is a CIDR. So if I went and gave 10.0.0.0 slash 16 as the CIDR and calculate what is the range I get, it tells me that my CIDR for this network will give me 65,536 IP addresses. How did it arrive at it? Because I gave 10.0.0 slash 16, it says that the first IP address will be this, and the last IP address will be this. On the other hand, if I go to the other example that I gave, which is to fix slash 24, then look at what I'm going to get. I'm getting only 256 IP addresses. The simple reason being this is fixed for the network and the IP addresses are in the range of 0 to 255 in the last octet. I can also go about specifying an even smaller network. The larger the value after the slash, my network becomes smaller. All that is happening is how many bits are fixed for the network. So you can see here when I said a slash 28, I get four bits, 29, 30, 31 and 32, which can vary for host, which results in two to the power four, four places and two bits, which makes it two to the power four, I get 16 IP addresses. So by doing this, I can identify what is a network specification for my network, which gives me the ability to size my network. It is very important we size it correctly so that later on when we want to interconnect networks, it comes in handy. We will see more about that in forthcoming videos.